Welcome as we worship today. Grace is here to bring God's grace to your life. And as you worship with us, we want you to know the depth of God's love, His mercy and grace that is given for you. And we hope that in your time of worship, that's brought to your life today. Today, as we worship, we are celebrating Christ the King, this one who is King of Kings and Lord of Lords and His reign in your life. Just one kind of highlight for us this week is that there will be available for you a Thanksgiving Eve worship that will be online for all of us at Grace. We want to hear, though, what you are thankful for. Normally, when we would gather together, that would be written down and we kind of collect all that, but we're actually asking you to do that either by calling the office or send an email to office at graceromeo.com, office at graceromeo.com, and share what you're thankful for. Just think of answering the question, I am thankful for dot, 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 and give us your thanksgivings. And we would love to include that in our time of worship that's recorded so that we can all hear those thanksgivings. Uh, We're asking for those uh, emails and the phone calls to be uh, done by Tuesday afternoon. Well, this is our third and final week of our series that has given us to study Matthew chapter 25 around the theme of remain, that we would remain in Christ to the very end. These, this chapter that speaks of the second coming of Jesus And so today, as we consider what it is to remain in Christ to the end, is that we would remain loving to the end. So may God bless our time of worship as we focus upon Matthew chapter 25, the very end of the chapter today. God bless your worship. And we're called to worship today in the words of Psalm 95. Come, let us sing to the Lord. Let us make a joyful noise to the rock of our salvation. Let us come into His presence with thanksgiving, for the Lord is a great God and a a great great King King above all gods. Come, let us worship and bow down. Let us kneel before the Lord our Maker. For He is our God, and we are the people of His pasture, and the the sheep sheep of His hand. And we begin in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. We now pray. We serve You, O Lord, with gladness, and come into Your presence with adoration and singing. You have made us Your people and the sheep of Your pasture. We enter your gates with thanksgiving and your courts with praise. We give thanks to you for you are good and your love endures forever. Your faithfulness endures to all generations and we look forward to the indescribable peace that you have prepared for those who love you. We pray this all in the name of Jesus Christ, your Son. Amen. Amen. We now join together in the prayer that Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Amen. We now join together in our opening song, Crown Him with Many Crowns.
And now we have the privilege of coming before our Lord in a time of confession where we leave our sins at the foot of the cross and we receive God's forgiveness, His grace and mercy. Dear friends, let us approach God with a true heart and confess our sins, asking Him in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ to forgive us. <laughs> Lord of life, I confess that I am by nature dead in sin for faithless worrying and selfish pride, for sins of habit and sins of choice, for the evil I have done and the good I have failed to do. You should cast me away from your presence forever. O Lord, I am sorry for my sins. Forgive me for Jesus' sake. Christ is died, Christ is risen, Christ will come again. In his great mercy, God made us alive in Christ, even when we were dead in our sins. As a called and ordained servant of Christ and by his authority, I therefore forgive you all your sins. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. We now join together in our song of praise. The King of love, my shepherd, is.
We now turn our hearts and minds to God's Word. And now God speaks, and today He speaks of who He is as our shepherd king. From Ezekiel chapter 34. For this is what the sovereign Lord says. I myself will search for my sheep and look after them. As a shepherd looks after his scattered flock when he is with them, so so will I look for my sheep. I will rescue them from all the places where they were scattered on a day of clouds and darkness. I will bring them out from the nations and gather them from the countries, and I will bring them into their own land. I will tend them in a good pasture, and the mountain heights of Israel will be their grazing land. There they will lie down in good grazing land. And there they will feed in a rich pasture on the mountains of Israel. I myself will tend my sheep and have them to lie down, declares the Sovereign Lord. I will search for the lost and bring back the strays. I will bind up the injured and strengthen the weak. But the sleek, And the strong I will destroy. I will shepherd the flock with justice. Therefore, this is what the Sovereign Lord says to them. See, I myself will judge between the fat sheep and the lean sheep. Because you shove with flank and shoulder, butting all the weak sheep with your horns until you have driven them away, I will save my flock, and they will no longer be plundered. I will judge between one sheep and another. I will place over them one shepherd, my servant David, and he will tend them. He will tend them and be their shepherd. I, the Lord, will be their God, and my servant David will be prince among them. I, the Lord, have spoken. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The Gospel reading from Matthew chapter 25, verses 31 to 46. When the Son of Man comes in His glory, and with all the angels with Him, He will sit on His glorious throne. All the nations will be gathered before Him, He will separate the people, one from another, as a sheep separates the sheep from the goats. He will put the sheep on his right and the goats on his left. Come, you who are blessed by my Father, take your inheritance, the kingdom prepared for you since the creation of the world. For I was hungry, and you gave me something to eat. I was thirsty, and you gave me something to drink. I was a stranger, and you invited me in. I needed clothes, and you clothed me. I was sick, and you looked after me. I was in prison, and you came to visit me. Then the righteous will answer him, Lord, when did we see you hungry and feed you thirsty and give you something to drink? When did you see a stranger and invite you in? Or needing clothes and clothe you? When did we see you sick or in prison and go to visit you? The king will reply, Truly, I tell you, whatever you did for the one, for one of the least of these brothers of mine, you did for me. Then he will say to those on his left, Depart from me. You who are cursed into the eternal fire, prepared for the devil and his angels. For I was hungry, and you gave me nothing to eat. I was thirsty, and you gave me nothing to drink. I was a stranger, 
and you did not invite me in. I needed clothes, and you did not clothe me. I was sick and in prison, and you did not look after me. They also will answer, Lord, when did we see you hungry or thirsty or a stranger or needing clothes or sick or in prison and did not help you? He will reply, truly I tell you, whatever you did not do for one of the least of these, you did not do for me. Then they will go away to eternal punishment, but the righteous to eternal life. This is the gospel of the Lord. Praise Praise to you, O Lord Christ. Christ. Remain. From Matthew chapter 25. Remain living in Christ to the end. And today as we consider those words just read in the Gospel, Matthew 25, verses 31 to 46. Remain loving. Here we are at the end of chapter 25, the final part of Jesus' final discourse where death looms large. And yet, Jesus reveals a kingdom where life looms even larger. When you enter into the chapel of the Hospital de la Caridad of Seville, Spain, you are met by a greeter. (laughs) But it's not a greeter with a smiling face and a warm welcome that's given. No. Instead, you are met by a painting where the figure is coming toward you. The painting is by Juan de Alvarez Leal, and the figure is death. Death is depicted as a skeleton coming toward you, and under his arm he carries your coffin. With a skeletal hand, he snuffs out the light of life. With a skeletal foot, he steps on the world. Death confronts you with his claim to rule over you and all things. But if you go further into the chapel, however, you will experience a vision of of life. There, deeper in the chapel, is another group of paintings. Using Old and New Testament stories, the artist Bartolome, Esteban Moreu, these painters, man, I could hardly say them, but Moreu, he paints these series of paintings. And it's all about Acts of love. The paintings reveal people clothing the naked, visiting those in prison, caring for the sick, the offering of hospitality to strangers. In the chapel, these paintings surround you with works of love. So when you enter the chapel of this hospital, You go from death to life. From the frightening thought that death and separation rules over you to the comforting experience of Christ's rule. Revealing a kingdom where love remains, where love is expressed in acts of love that endure, love that remains. This hospital chapter, chapel, this hospital chapel captures the message of our text from Matthew's gospel. Jesus is speaking to his disciples at the very end of his ministry. 
And we, as God's people, have come to the end of the church year. We are reading the end of His teaching at the end of His ministry, about the end of all things. All that is left now, from this time on, for Jesus, is His Passover and death. Yet in this context, where death looms large, Jesus reveals a kingdom where life looms even larger. Jesus reveals that at the end of all things, He will return in His glory. He will be surrounded by angels and He will be sitting on the throne. All nations will be gathered before Him and He will judge both the living and the dead. Here we have the promise of judgment and salvation. The glorious Son of Man is enthroned. He is King and Judge, accompanied by His holy angels. Every human destiny is decided by how He stands in relationship to Him, to this King to this judge. So, King Jesus gives us a picture of what judgment looks like in the separation of the sheep and the goats. Now let's be honest. If this were the only word of God regarding salvation and judgment, then a religion of works would be the logical conclusion. Sheep do acts of kindness, and they receive heavenly praise and eternal rewards. Goats don't, and they get hell. It's a tough parable. But this is not the only red ink in our Bibles. Jesus has said a lot more. He said a whole lot of things where we are given a complete Word of God that makes it clear. We do not, of course, earn our way into God's good graces. We don't buy our way into eternal life. Even this parable agrees with this message. You see, notice when Jesus first says to those sheep, Come, you who are blessed of my Father, prepared for you from the foundations of the world. You see, the sheep are sheep because God has made them sheep. They are chosen as His own. They are not sheep because they made a choice to be sheep. They are not sheep because they did acts of kindness. They are not sheep because they worked hard to become sheep. They are sheep for one reason. God has done it. God makes them sheep. God makes them righteous. And when these sheep live, they live as His sheep. They go out into God's creation, out into their ordinary lives, and they take care of those around them. They help the sick. They feed the hungry. They visit the imprisoned. They clothe the naked. They do sheep things. Sheep act like sheep. And sheep listen to the shepherd's voice. Sheep know the shepherd's voice, and they follow him. This is really important to note this, because in the scene of separation between those who are sheep and those who are goats, it all hinges on how they loved or how they neglected to love the least of these brothers of mine. Verse 4. 
Who are these brothers? And why would what is done or not done to them be the dividing factor? In the Gospel of Matthew, whenever brothers is used, it's always used in reference to the disciples. Except a a few times when Jesus is referring to his literal brothers and sisters. But every other time, brothers is talking about the followers of Jesus. Those who speak His words, those who proclaim the good news of His love, the ones of whom the gospel was received and believed and lived out as disciples. That's who these brothers are. Fellow sheep who then are cared for in times of need by other sheep. And the goats, the goats reject the message and ignore the messengers. They neglect the message of life in Christ and are dismissive of the good news that Jesus is Lord, that He is King. They reject His reign and in so doing have nothing to do with those who proclaim it. These brothers who proclaim Christ and then live it out. The goats choose what God never planned. They choose to ignore the call of God. They choose to ignore the cry of their fellow creatures. They reject grace and choose death. They share the unintended and unsought fate of Satan and his horde. The separation is harsh. And it is eternal. The reality of hell should give us all pause. But you, you are sheep. You are His sheep. At the font, you were given His name. And you were made His own. The Lord is your shepherd. You belong to Him. You believe in Him. So, as His sheep, live like His sheep. You go out into God's world and you do what you've been given to do. You meet the needs of fellow creatures who cry for help. That's what sheep do. What amazes me about Jesus telling us this parable is the way in which Jesus reveals that even the smallest acts of love are a part of His kingdom that never ends. Jesus reveals His final judgment and those who are blessed are amazed. They are amazed at God's unexpected presence in the moments of grace. Jesus opens their eyes to see times when they were near His presence in a suffering world by checking in on someone who's alone, offering shelter to the homeless, dropping a winter coat into a clothing drive, putting a jar of peanut butter into a food bank. Such things are acts of love for Christ. And He is in that. He's in this suffering world with you. And on the last day, in the end, He will remember your work of love. Remain in His love. And you will remain loving. Lately, it's difficult to see the presence of God in our world. 
There is so much suffering and pain and division and anger. We see the problems of homelessness and the pain of sickness and not so much the power of faith. Our minds are overwhelmed. Our thoughts overcrowded by all we are going through in our nation, in our communities, in our businesses, in our schools. All this suffering and isolation makes it seem like the kingdom of God is far away. Yet Jesus promises us He is here. When Christ died on the cross, He entered suffering to conquer it and to rule over it for you. When God raised Him from the dead, He seated Jesus at the right hand to rule over all things today. Our Christ, the King that we worship. We remember there will come a day when Christ returns in glory to judge the living and the dead. And on that day, He will take away all suffering and bring about a new creation. But until that time, Remain. He has not deserted our world. Rather, as the poet Paul Claudel once said, Jesus enters into suffering so that he might fill it with his presence. This is the way our king rules. Royalty stoops. This is the unique power of Christ the King. The combination of royalty and stooping. We must never lose sight of both of those things. And if we do, we lose half the message of the good news of who Christ is and what He does for you as your King. The Son who sits on His glorious throne with all nations before Him. That's our King. But He is the same One who at the very height of His power reveals that the universe turns on a cup of water given to the least in His name. An outpouring of love of our hearts toward this King, will therefore transcend us to do acts of love toward the least of these. On this, the last day of the church year, we come to remember and proclaim that Jesus, our Savior, our King, will return to restore all things And while we wait for His return, we are not disheartened by the darkness and death of our world. Like those who enter into that hospital chapel, we faithfully walk past the vision of death to partake in a vision of life. We care for the poor. We visit the sick. We soothe those who are suffering, trusting that these small acts of service have an eternal significance in the kingdom of our Lord. Love looms large every time we give. And every time that we gather and we close our time of worship, We close with a gospel message of peace and an exhortation to remain in loving service. That close, actually, is a summary of living our lives under the reign of Christ our King. 
You know it. The exhortation goes like this. Go in peace. Serve the Lord. The King of love, our shepherd is. Our life as His sheep is to live and remain loving, serving the King and others. To which we respond appropriately at this time of year. Thanks be to God. In Jesus' name, amen. And now we affirm our faith together in the words of the Apostles' Creed where we confess, I believe in God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, His only Son, our Lord, who was was conceived conceived by the Holy Spirit, Spirit, born of the Virgin Virgin Mary, Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. The third day He rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence He will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit the holy Christian church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. And now the portion of our worship as we bring our blessings before our God in a time of thanksgiving and offering to our King. Let's pray. Lord, all of what you give in our life is blessing. And now we take a moment in our worship to bring back a portion of that which you've blessed us with. Would you use these, our offerings, that others might know you to be the King, the King of love? And would you use our offerings too to serve those who are in need? To that end, we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. And we now come before our Lord in a time of prayer where we offer up prayers uh, for those uh, asking. Uh, We especially want to remember today Ron and Bev Force, uh, friends of Gary Feltz. Uh, They were in a serious car accident, uh, so we pray for uh, complete healing and peace uh, for uh, both Ron and Bev. With that, we go to the Lord in prayer. Lord, we pray for the faithful proclamation of Christ our King and for the strengthening of God's people in this true faith and in their baptismal life in Christ. For all the schools of our church body, for the seminaries where our pastors are being trained for your service, and for the campuses where our young people are prepared for their occupations by their vocation as God's people by baptism and faith. We pray for Christ, holy, Catholic, and apostolic church, for all who faithfully confess the same name of Jesus, and for the protection of the Lord to extend over us against the devil, the world, and our own sinful selves. Father, we pray for God's people in this place, Grace Lutheran Fellowship, and for the mission and work that God has given us to do We pray for the unity of the Spirit and for a spirit of cooperation and harmony in our life together, loving and serving our neighbors. Father, stretch out your hand of peace and healing upon our nation as we live in a time of uncertainty, political unrest and violence, neighbor turned against neighbor and friend against friend. Heal our nation and our world from this pandemic and the chaos hatred and mistrust that it has brought about. Heal the discord within our own families. Help us to find our identity, not in our political alliance, but in Jesus Christ, our King, where our true identity is found as your dear children. 
Jesus, you call us to serve the least of these, and we pray for the hungry and the homeless, for the unemployed and underemployed. We pray for a giving spirit that we may not neglect the poor nor fail to provide for them, so that we may fulfill the Lord's bidding to love and to serve. Let them see you, Jesus, in all that we do. As we work in your name, let your gospel be spread to all people. And Father, we now offer up those afflicted by illness of body or mind. We especially remember those families and friends that are connected to grace who are dealing with the COVID uh, and its effects. Uh, Father, we pray for healing and we pray for those who care for them. And Father, we now especially pray for Ron and Bev that they would be healed of all their infirmities from this accident. And we pray for those that we now name in our hearts. We pray that with God's strength they may be healed and kept through patience and on the last day be delivered to everlasting life. Lord God, Heavenly Father, graciously receive our prayers and deliver and preserve us. For to you alone we give all glory, honor, and worship, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. We now join together in our closing song, Crown Him with Many Crowns. And now receive God's blessing and benediction as we go into our day. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you his peace. Amen. Amen. Go in peace, serve the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be, be to God. God. Have a great week and a blessed Thanksgiving.